Welcome to episode of the Grip Strip Podcast, the white bread edition of the Grip Strip Podcast. You'll find out why here shortly. My name is Philip Matthew. I'm your host, and I'm here with my co-host, Josh Fine. What's going on, brother? Hey, I'm doing great, Phil. Of course, um, yeah, the white bread, the uh, new nickname, I guess we're going to give William Byron, because um, that's what he's pretty much is and everything, but he's won two in a row here in the Cup Series the past couple of weeks. So, yeah, now we got to give him this nickname. But, yeah, otherwise, doing pretty nice and, you know, uh, glad to be back on for another week. Yeah, definitely. We'll get into Byron coming through there with two tires stop late uh, after Kevin Harvick had taken the lead from the Hendrick duo, him and Byron and white bread and, and young money dominated this race. Like they had at Vegas. Uh, but Harvick on that last run, last long run of the race in the third stage had passed both Hendrick cars and was well on his way to his 10th win at Phoenix. And then they basically in the midst of Harrison Burton spinning, they called a caution that basically altered the entire race when there was other instances where they could have called cautions that had similar results and they didn't bother to. So that's typical. That's a, if a Hendrick car was leading, they wouldn't have called out one caution, but we'll get in all that. We'll get into the points, uh, key players other than those two Hendrick cars and, uh, the, uh, four car of Kevin Harvick. We'll get into the Xfinity series, which saw Sammy Smith get his first career win. And, uh, for once, I actually was right on a pick, uh, so I'm actually proud of myself. Didn't watch one lap of the race, and I'm glad, but Sammy Smith won. So good for him and good for the Gibbs organization getting both of their cars uh, solidified into the playoff. It's not like anyone was really worried that they would make the playoff. Uh, so we'll get into those into that race as well. The roundup will be busy. It'll have the Gator Nationals NHRA season opener. Extreme E, the Desert x their season opener. Supercars, their su- season opener at Newcastle. Uh, a Red Bull team caught for cheating. What a shock um, in race one. Supercross at Indy. Uh, saw Cooper Webb win and take the points lead, so that's interesting. Uh, the prologue for the WEC took place uh, here yesterday, and they'll be racing on Friday, Friday afternoon. Uh, into the evening for their opener before the 12 hours of Sebring, the first race for IMSA since the Rolex 24. F2 will be racing at Jeddah, which will lead into the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix preview and picks. We will also make uh, picks and preview the triple header at the Atlanta uh, slot car track. Joshua will let you know all things going on in iRacing and in this sim world in a sim segment. And then we will close the deal. So first, and then might even get some NFL in there prior to the roundup, to be fair. Um, I'll put that in there in a second. So yeah, the United Reynolds work United 500 at Phoenix. Uh, they It was more or less Larson and Byron. They, they swapped the top two positions for the first two stages and uh, led what is it, 265 of the race's 317 laps. But Kevin Harvick got in a position to lead the race and likely win the race. And then strategy in that last pit stop for the green-white checkered with him taking four tires and basically everyone that finished ahead of him on two uh, left him with a fifth-place finish, continuing a string of top tens at Phoenix, but... Obviously, he wanted way more than that. Um, on a day where, at least early in the race, Josh, I would think the Fords were were dead to rights. Um, Joey Logano dominated at Phoenix in November and was a lap was going a lap down or in the process of going a lap down. Chase Briscoe, who was a defending race winner, was in the process of going a lap down in the first stage. And then after the first stage, it started to look like a lot of these Ford teams made the adjustments necessary. And I think the track started to come to some of those drivers and they made their moves up forward. Um, Toyota's also with the Gibbs Brigade um, and the 2311 group uh, had uh, had solid results. We'll get into the results right now. So William Byron gets the win, his uh, sixth Cup Series win, second of the season, two in a row, trying to go and repeat at Atlanta here this coming weekend. Ryan Blaney finishes second again at Phoenix. 
Tyler Reddick third is best finish for 23-11 so far. Kyle Larson from the pole led the most laps, won a stage, finished fourth. Of course, Byron won the first stage and then gets the extra playoff points and all that crap. Kevin Harvick finishes fifth. Christopher Bell finishes sixth. Chase Briscoe from 24th uh, to seventh. Kyle Busch, eighth. Alex Bowman, ninth, probably best finish he's had at Phoenix in forever. And uh, Josh Berry in the nine car, uh, filling in for William Clyde Elliott, the second, finishes 10. So all four Hendrick cars finish in the top 10. Uh, and then the, f- the fifth Chevy is Kyle Busch. You have two Fords from from uh, SHR, then Ryan Blaney, and then you have two Toyotas as well. So going outside of that, uh, Joey Logano finished 11th, Ryan Priest was 12th, McDowell 13th, Bubba Wallace 14th, Chris Busher 15th, Austin Dillon somehow or another finished 16th, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski who had a way better car than what the finish showed. He was up in the top 10 most of the day, I think that round of pit stops and then that last restart didn't help him out much. A.J. Allmendinger spun uh, in the first green-white checkered and recovered to finish 20th. Eric Jones tried to stay out long enough to get a caution, didn't happen. Finished 21st. Daniel Suarez, uh, unfortunate 22nd place finish. And then yet another incident between Denny Hamlin and Ross Chastain leave him as the last two cars on the lead lap in 23rd and 24th when both of them had had much better days. Uh, so that's that. I mean, they had a bowling deal, uh, yes, a couple days ago, they showed it on TV yesterday prior to, uh, the NASCAR race. And some of these guys were in it. Like the, the SHR crew outside of Kevin Harvick, uh, you had Jeffrey Earnhardt who looked like he knows how to bowl pretty good. And you had, uh, Greg Alding who actually bowled a 300 at some point and, and, uh, went out and promptly threw it in the gutter uh, and got eliminated. Uh, so that was something. And then uh, what is it? Who else was there? They had um, Ricky Stenhouse was there. Richard. Yeah, they did. And he was bowling with my, um, the, my dream, one of my dream women and Daria Pioke. Um Ricky Stenhouse couldn't get the ball too far outside. And I guess that may have been a complaint for Miss Hummer, but um, in terms of, yeah, he was out there. You had, Ryan Priest not trying to humiliate himself. Briscoe looked lost, and then he became an alien. Eric Almirola went out there and bowled with Kyle Troop again, and they went and won the whole deal. But his day went to hell when his wheel fell off, literally. And I'm um, probably going to see some penalties and crap from that uh, sometime this week. But that's beside the point. Any, I just wanted to make a reference to Daria Pio because she's hot, and she can bowl. Um Byron getting the win, uh, solidifying himself in the playoff. If we were really worried that he wasn't going to make the playoff, you get two wins. I think that's basically a guarantee. Um, right now, the point standings have three three of the four Hendrick cars in the top five. So uh, it looks like if there's one thing that we can take away from this West Coast swing, Hendrick Motorsports, and even from the Daytona 500 to a point, Hendrick Motorsports may have been a little bit off or things had been equalized a little bit, which helped some of these other teams. But Hendrick Motorsports came prepared for 2023, and William Byron is bearing the fruit of that labor um, with a second win. And now they're just kind of trying to get that regular season points championship and get the extra bonus points to give themselves a cushion uh, come September and starting at Darlington. But... Yep, they made him and Rudy Fugel, they made that call for two tires, went and faded a couple restarts, gets that win, and uh, yeah, gets to go for three in a row at at Atlanta, which he won this race last year. So um, Hendrick Motorsports benefit, Kevin Harvick had the chance to win, but the call for four tires unfortunately left Kevin Harvick uh, out to dry in a sense, and he still got a top five, he's second in points, but... I think you'd have rather gotten to win than uh, being second in points or Josh. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with first off with William Byron, I mean, great start to the season for him, uh, you know, finishing second. Well, I mean, he was up there at the end of the race of the Daytona 500 with Larson, I think, and then got, you know, in, in involved in some of those incidents. But then, you know, the uh, 
Las Las Vegas win last week where he dominated and came back to uh, win that one. And then also this week where he was up front for stage one and won that one. Um, Obviously, you know, he's had a really good start to the year and, you know, last year, you know, kind of had the same deal winning uh, at Atlanta and then winning at Martinsville where he, you know, dominated up front there. So we'll have to see, you know, if uh, he's able to keep this up uh, or does he, uh, kind of fade and drop off kind of like uh, what happened to him last year uh, where he was, you know, up there, up, you know, up front and looked like he might be a, a guy to look out for and then, you know, fell off in the summer. So we'll have to see if he's able to keep it up this year. And, you know, interestingly enough, uh, you know, Danny Hamlin, if you listen to his uh, podcast, you know, he uh, talked about before the season said that um, he thinks uh, William Byron would have a good season. And, you know, so far I mean, he's looking to be right there. So clearly Danny knows something about Byron that most people maybe uh, didn't think about. So um looks like Byron's uh, having a good year so far, but, you know, I think on top of that, you know, kind of the reason why, you know, not only Byron's having a good year, but, you know, Larson's been pretty dominant, you know, the last couple of races and has been pretty fast, you know, was fast at uh, Fontana and would have been up there contending for the win had he not had the engine issues. But, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons is, is because probably because they've uh, had a little bit of advantage testing with the garage 56 car, uh, you know, there obviously there's differences there, but you know they have um, some a lot of similarities and everything. And um, you know, I mean, obviously they are testing on road courses and stuff. They're not testing on ovals, but I'm sure that you know they're able to gain a lot of knowledge from that uh, that they can take and put over into the uh, Cup car and uh, get you know, especially from a aero standpoint. So uh, definitely, yeah, that's uh, probably helping them a lot. Even though you know, I think everybody's supposed to be getting some kind of uh, data from that, but obviously, you know, Hendrick has uh, probably a first dibs on that just by the nature of them being the ones kind of uh, spearheading that project. So I think, you know, they've obviously got a lot of help from that. But then uh, I think, you know, another thing we have to talk about is the whole issue with the uh, the Louvers, uh, you know, got confiscated, uh, you know, in inspection, you know, before the race, uh, you know, first practice and everything. So um, obviously, I mean, they downplaying the that, it really helped them because, you know, they still went out and won the race and all that stuff. But, um, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what NASCAR comes out with the, the penalties. Um, you know, people talking about NASCAR, potentially, you know, the biggest penalty in the history of the sport, at least monetarily, we'll have to see, you know, what kind of points fine, uh, comes out of this, you know, if they take away playoff points from this race, uh, for, you know, William Byron and, you know, maybe all the Hendrick cars, do they uh, levy some kind of punishment uh, to discourage uh, whatever they tried to gain from messing with the Louvers? And you know, obviously the uh, precedent last year was set, you know, with Keselowski, they got uh, penalized pretty heavily at the beginning of the year. Uh, and then, you know, later on in the year, Joe Gibbs racing with Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin failing post-racing inspection. Um, and, you know, they didn't even really modify the part. They just allegedly just put on uh, a different or some kind of wrapping or whatever, but, uh, that I guess made it illegal, but definitely, uh, you know, the, uh, issue there with, uh, the, the louvers, uh, we'll have to see, I guess, tomorrow NASCAR announcing penalties. So we'll have to see, uh, what type of penalties they get. And they weren't the only ones to I me, mean, obviously, uh, colleague racing got two penalties, uh, there. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see if, um, you know, he, um, you know, they get some heavy penalties as well. Cause you know, obviously NASCAR doesn't want, uh, too much modification of the next gen car. They're very strict, you know, about how they're doing this and everything. And yeah, I think that might play a role, but you know, otherwise, you know, this race, um, not really a whole lot to take away, uh, from it. I mean, I think, you know, Phoenix, you know, last couple of years hasn't been really that great. Uh, but you know, Phoenix, they haven't really done, uh, too much racing last couple of years. It's kind of been kind of a parade uh, and everything, even with the next gen car and, you know, gen six doesn't really matter what it kind of uh, car they had in the cup series. Um, it's always been kind of a struggle to pass, but of course, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the things people were looking for this weekend with low downforce package, uh, they obviously they took away downforce uh, on the spoiler and they were, um, you know, modified some of the strakes on the rear diffuser, try to reduce rear downforce, uh, on the car. But I, I mean, I think it probably, you know, worked to some degree. I think you kind of could see it 
take place. Uh, I mean, I think especially with Kevin Harvick kind of being able to make a pass under green conditions with uh, Kyle Larson, even though it took him the whole race to be able to um, make up time to get up to Larson. So maybe that's evidence of it. But yeah, I think it's probably going to take a lot more change to really get them to be able to put on a good race, uh, you know, truly good race on a short track. Um, I mean, I think they have to, probably eliminate shifting on the racetracks uh which apparently you know it's partly because the manufacturers i guess are wanting to stay within a certain rev band to be able to um be able to uh you know put all the race you know make it cheaper for teams to uh entry uh okay um but yeah i think um the teams they you know they were able to make it cheaper to have entry into this but you know i think yeah, definitely the issues there with uh, the um, teams trying to make it easier to make cost for you know some of the lower end teams. I think um, definitely the manufacturers are having a say within uh, you know the uh, cost for the teams and everything. So that's probably why they want the revs to be lower um, and everything. But they have to be able to eliminate shifting um, because otherwise you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of passing. Uh, that takes place on the racetrack, but uh, the, I think that's still an issue. And then you know the other issue is like even even with all these changes, like to the rear end uh, downforce. I mean, then still a big billboard at the end of the day, and the billboard, uh, you know, it's a small surface area that they really or a larger surface area that they only reduce by a very small amount. So uh, that's something to consider as well when you look at the older cars. You know, compared to the cot compared to the gen 6 well the they have a huge rear end um that takes up a lot of surface area and that um also is affecting the downforce from the other um you know other cars that are trying to pass a car in front of them and not getting as much air to the you know front end so yeah that's definitely an issue there as well so um we'll, we'll have to see what martinsville looks like and we'll have to see what uh you know the other uh you know the other low downforce uh, short tracks look like as well, but yeah, this this wasn't really too much uh, to look out for in this race. But um, you know, definitely we could see more of the racing like this later on at the short tracks. Yeah, so there's um, I mean, Josh brought up good points with the car and some of the aero changes. There, I think it's a work in progress. You have a, a lot to look look at. I mean, uh, I mean, Phoenix is probably not the greatest track as it is to be r ding it because it's they made it into a dump and they're not going to be that many restarts uh, and that also doesn't help um the tires are still too hard so there's no fall off really unless you run a very very long run so maybe the likes of richmond could be a better race i think bristol could be a better race um some of these other opportunities we'll see what the road courses are like but I mean, it's a positive step. I think there are some people who saying like it's a positive step, but there's still way more they need to do. And I do agree with Josh when it comes to some of these um, cost chain, whatever cost basis things with the gearing and shifting, and uh, that's probably part of the problem. If you you if you had a different type of gear like they used to have um, for different types of racetracks, I think that would help a little bit. But we will see. Um, I mentioned Alex Bowman uh, has leads the points. He's finished in the top 10 of every race so far this year. Uh, Kevin Harvick now is only three points behind him. Ross Chastain is six points behind, and uh, he lost his he lost the points lead uh, this weekend. William Byron's only 10 points back in fourth, and uh, Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell tied for fifth in points. Uh, but Larson, of course, has that win. Um, I, um, yeah. And then William Byron has 13 playoff points so far, so far, uh, along with, and that's the most, of course, other than Ricky Stenhouse, who has, uh, five. I said that Kyle Larson has a race win. I mean, he has a stage win. Um, Kyle Bush has five, of course, from his win at Texas or California. Uh, Kyle Bush is ninth. Oh, Richards 15th. Bubba Wallace right now is the cutoff and there's, he has an 11 point gap on Austin Sendrick and actually a 13 point gap on his buddy, Corey LaJoy. 
who still is in the top 20 in points after four races. So uh, credit to him. Tyler Reddick moved up 14 positions in points with his third place finish and now is only 20 points behind his teammate. Uh, other big movers, I mean, Byron and Larson both gained nine spots in points. Uh, Chase Briscoe gained seven, Priest gained four, Bald Spot Dylan four, Michael McDowell three. So those are some of the big gainers in um, in the points right now. I'm trying to look at who's run every race. Uh, there's, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six guys right there. Eric Jones right now, it's bad. Right now, it's not a great look for the back end of SHR. I mean, even Eric Almirola is over there now. So all three SHR guys are clustered together, um, 25th through 27th. Then you have the you have the Legacy Motor Club duo in 28th and 32nd. And Harrison Burton's in 30th around the cellar dwellers. So not a good look for those guys at all uh, going in Atlanta. But it is a wild card race, so who knows what could come from that. I think we might have to bring out the algorithm. I don't know if it's it's uh, high in hiding, but we might have to bring it back out because it is generally a super speedway race. Uh, go to the Xfinity race there at uh, Phoenix. They had the... United Rentals 200, and that saw, as mentioned, Sammy Smith get his first career victory. Uh, glad to say I picked him. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, for once, I actually got something right there. Uh, Gray Galding, just like he bowled, um, crashed and finished next to last. Uh, Dawson Cram, former uh, uh, guest on the show, got the 74 in the show but then had a fuel pump issue when it was the first car out. Justin Allgaier started second, won both stages, and uh, led, what, 20 laps, twice or 20 laps, gets those points, but wrecks and finishes 36. So yet another uh, close call at Phoenix for Justin Allgaier. But Sammy Smith gets the win over Ryan Truex, and Sheldon Creed finishes third. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Sammy Smith led the most laps, after that, you had uh, John Hunter at 19, Austin Hill at 22, Cold Custard had 38 laps led. And it wasn't really much of anything. Uh, the vast majority of the guys that were competitive were in that cluster from 1st to 14th because you had Anthony Alfredo actually got a 14th place finish there. Uh, only a couple of guys in Truex and Barry who didn't have stage points uh, this week, but in the and Kyle Busch there uh, started 38th and finished ninth uh, in the colleague number 10 in a backup car. So yeah, Sammy Smith, Ryan Trick, Sheldon Creed, Riley Herbst, Chandler Smith, your top five: John Hunter, Austin Hill, Josh Berry, Kyle Busch, Daniel Hemrick in the top 10, and Sam Air, Cole Custer, Moffitt, Alfredo, Kligerman round out your top 15. There's 11 cautions uh, for. 69 laps. Uh, minus see two spin. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that was a wreck there. This seven got into it with Brett Moffat in the 26 of Kaz Grala, and that eliminated uh, that was part of it there. And then um, for him, after he goes and wins both stages, that's pretty brutal. So, yep, you go with that. I mean, Sammy Smith getting his first win, not surprising at all, really, Josh. Uh, something to look at now that he's won in K and he's won on Arca, Arca East the last couple of years. He's won actual regular Arca races. Uh, he's shown to have a lot of talent. He's basically, I guess, he's Michael Annette with talent, um, because he has all the same sponsors, and I guess he comes from that relative area. So I think he's got he's on the fast track as well for Toyota. Uh, they don't want to lose him, I would think, if he keeps on going on a path like this. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with Sammy Smith, you know, he's be definitely been uh, fast since he's started racing uh, in uh, the Xfinity Series since last year. And he's had a couple of good runs this year. And so it was a matter of time before he uh, came out and won a race. But uh, definitely a good good win there. And, uh, you know, interestingly enough, you know, he's born in June 2004 uh, and you know, he's older, you know, than both 
or younger than you know both of us uh and certainly you know makes you feel old there i guess but um not too old i guess because i mean it's probably already happened for you and you know for me i think chase elliott is like three weeks younger than me so when he won the championship i was like oh damn well somebody my age just went and won the xfinity championship in 2014 but um you know uh chase or well sammy smith uh you know he's been pretty good so far in his uh stint uh with jogi's racing so uh he could be a you know, kind of, I'm not going to say he's like going to re- do what Ty Gibbs did a year ago, but uh, he's definitely been really good so far in his uh, tenure and uh, that uh, that team. So definitely look out for him some, um, you know, some of the short track races, I think. But yeah, he's uh, definitely got a lot of talent in Pilot J, uh, fu- um, you know, funding him there as well. But yeah, some of these other guys, uh, Chandler Smith uh, had another good run, um, led a couple laps there. Uh, you know, Kyle Busch, uh, you know, I'd surprised that, you know, he wasn't up there as much. I mean, I think, you know, he had a, uh, I mean, he started in the back as well, but, uh, you know, he didn't really lead a, uh, that much only led three laps and thought he would have been up there, but I guess, you know, it shows for Kyle, you know, you have to, uh, be able to be in a really good equipment and, you know, having to chase down Joe Gibbs racing, uh, car when you're in a colleague car, um, you know, shows, uh, what you have to do to, uh, be able to run up front, but, um, you know, I think, you know, having the opportunity for these guys to race against Kyle Busch is certainly valuable in uh, this series. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, valuable to get experience against him. Uh, I think, you know, Cole Custer, you know, led early on in the race, but, you know, fell out of the top 10, finished 12th. So, you know, they've got to be able to put these races together and, you know, finish uh, in the top 10 and get points, but certainly want a better result, especially after winning pole and leading uh, early on. Um, you know, one other thing I'll talk about in this race is, uh, you know, junior motorsports cars kind of get it into it, you know, with uh, Josh Berry uh, and Sam Mayer, both uh, getting into the spin uh, early on in the race. And I mean, it wasn't um, malicious or well, maybe, I don't know, can't say if it was malicious or not, but certainly didn't have anything bad come out of it. Uh, but then, you know, later on with, uh, the seven, uh, getting into that accident with Cosgrala and Brett Moffat, I think it also started with, uh, Brandon Jones getting into, uh, Algaier, uh, going into turn three. And then I think he drifted down into, um, I think Cosgrala or, um, somebody, and then that, kind of put him back into Justin Algar and then uh, Justin Algar gets into the wall. So, um, you know, some of the junior motorsports cars, well, I guess all of them really are, you know, still um, getting into each other. Obviously, you know, go back to Daytona and they failed uh, to win that race because they couldn't uh, figure out how to team up together and ended up losing. So, um, you know, I guess if you're a junior fan like me, I guess you're a little bit disappointed in how their drivers are turning out this season, Um, you know, even though, you know, Josh Berry did the best, I think, out of, you know, all of them. I think you still want, you don't want to see your drivers be the caution ever. And especially when two of your cars get together, you don't ever want to see that. So uh, I guess, yeah, you got to figure something out there and maybe Junior needs to have another meeting with them and figure out um, how to, you know, stay out of each other's way or something like that. So we'll, we'll have to see there. But, you know, that's some interesting subplot there with uh, kind of the, I guess junior teammates running into each other on the track uh, early in the season like that. But um, yeah, as far as, I mean, you, you picked Sammy Smith and obviously hit that one right on the money. Uh, so yeah, definitely a good, good result there for you. I mean, I don't know if you put any wages on that or anything, but that would have definitely been a good uh, bet to pick on. And me on the other hand uh, with uh, Xfinity, I was not, uh, quite as good at their picking uh, Bruckshot Jones, of course. And then Parker Kligman was a wild card. And I guess he was up there for a little bit, I think, but uh, ended up finishing in 15th. So yeah, not as, quite as good as your picks, but yeah, definitely a good pick day on the Xfinity side. But yeah, we'll have to see now going into Atlanta, uh, how they uh, turn out and um, you know, how these cars race against each other and, I think it's going to be an interesting event there, but yes, I think this one is probably definitely a little bit better of a race than the um, Cup Series race, but I think that's to be expected when I think these cars have less downforce still than the Cup Series. Less downforce and I think more horsepower, Uh, or it's very close, if anything. Uh, 
Yeah, it's Phoenix. It's just their dumpy track, uh, and they only have 200 miles there, so it's an even shorter race. Not a lot of time to make any adjustments there. Austin Hill right now, of course, he's won two of the first four races. He's got a solid 30-point lead on John Hunter Nemechek. Justin Allgaier lost a ton of points uh, in by having that bad finish at Phoenix. Now he's in third, nine points behind John Hunter. Chandler Smith, Riley Herbst are another point back behind Allgaier. Sammy Smith moves up to sixth in points. Sam Mayer, Cole Custer, Josh Berry, Daniel Hemrick, Sheldon Creed, and Parker Kligerman right now are your 12. Uh, that would be, yeah, because it is 12. I mean, it should be 12, 10, and 8. 12 in Cup, 10 in, in Xfinity, and 8 in Trucks, but that's beside the point. Uh, Moffitt right now is 12 points out of the uh, playoff at the moment, and then you have Ryan Sieg and Jeb Burton a further point back of that. And Joe Graff Jr., who went back to being Joe Graff Jr., uh, now has lost seven spots in points with his uh, stellar run, and now he's 16th in points. Brockshot Jones, as uh, Josh mentioned, he's right now 18th in points. So that's something to look at uh, early in the season, trying to get used to this new team. And a team that last year, with, of course, different crew chief, different people, was up front virtually every race. Um, Alfredo, Adam Parker, Retzlaff just behind him. Clemens, I'm trying to see who else. Somebody like Kaz Grawl, of course, is at his tough start to the year. Um, got a, yeah, the, he stinks. The, uh, the what you call um, Alpha Prime team has had a rough start to the year as well. Ryan Ellis, Jeffrey Earnhardt. And um, you have Greg Galding in the 08, bowling gutters and driving gutters. Leland Honeyman, who who made a first start of the year and ran over uh, Tony Bridinger in the Xfinity race a couple of times. And um, trying to see your Blaine Perkins, who sucks ass. Uh, he's made a, he's ran every race so far this year, so he's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, so he's he's the worst driver that's run every race so far this year. That's that's pretty pathetic. Uh, yeah, so I mean Austin Hill right now is kind of and he's the defending winner at Atlanta. So. Let's see what's going to happen with that. Uh, let's get into the NFL before we get into the roundup, Josh. Uh, you saw one of your your players on your offensive line uh, get signed away, and there is some questions about it here on NFL.com in regards to the amount he got paid and whatever. But in terms of a now Denver just signed another guy, unbelievable. Um, Sean Payton's on a heater, uh, it seems like, today. Uh, trying to go and get his people in place uh, to to go and Sean Payton, yeah, make a power move. But you still have to beat you still have to beat Kermit the Frog. So I don't really care what they think. Um, Raiders made the right call. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Dolphins steal. Yeah, Lou Anarumo can't be happy because they lost. Yeah, they lost uh, the both of their safeties. Uh, I'm saying it's a free yeah. So right now they're in their defense, the back end of their defense is uh is pretty uh, uh that's a beat up now. And then yeah, that's a I give credit to Jeff Chadia on that one. Um yeah, so we had I'm trying to go through here. Oh, so Jason Kelsey is returning. That's that's cool. Um yeah, I'm trying to go through here on free agency, the Dolphins signed David Long, the former linebacker for Tennessee. Patrick Peterson signs with two year deal with Pittsburgh, which is which is nuts. Uh one of the best cornerbacks of his time going and signing with, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is huge. Um after Cam Wallace or Cam Sutton signed with Detroit, and Akilo Witherspoon, Levi Wallace, Arthur Mollette, and um there's those guys and then uh you got uh, yeah thirteen Peterson's current active INT leaders, a Pro Bowls, uh, yeah. So Texans expected to sign Jimmy Ward. Okay, well, good for him. Uh, Zach Allen goes from Arizona to Denver. Yeah, you have um, Sam Darnold is going to the Forty ers so he's going to be a, a bridge kind of guy, somebody as a safety net with uh, 
the injuries, concerns, and issues that have happened with the quarterbacks that they have. Of course, Brock Purdy and uh, just finally getting his uh, elbow surgery, reconstruction, or whatever the hell. And then Trey Lance with his um, leg and ankle. I mentioned Jesse Bates going to Atlanta. Jared Stidham goes to the Broncos to back up uh, Russell Wilson. Mike McGlinchey leaves the Niners to go to Denver. Ben Powers, whoever he is, gets $52 million, so two offensive linemen there. You see Calais Campbell got cut, so that's something. Jawan Taylor's the guy. Josh, he was your uh, right tackle this year, and now he's going to Kansas City for $80 million over four years to be a protector and possibly play left tackle for um, uh, the Chiefs and protecting Patrick Mahomes, which is trying to protect the the face of the league. Uh, that's got to be a lot of pressure. I mean, he definitely had pressure having to uh, defend the weak side for um, Trevor Lawrence and under the the tutelage of the new regime with Doug Peterson. But this is a whole different level now uh, for Patrick going having to defend Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Mike White leaves the Jets to go to Miami. Jonathan Jones resigns with the Patriots. I said Cam Sutton going to Detroit. And um, yeah, Deron Payne resigned with uh, the Washington Redskins after they, they franchised him. Tayshawn Gibson comes back to the 49ers. Uh, Robert Wood signs with the Houston Texans. So that's an interesting signing. It'll be good for whoever their quarterback is. Uh, Matt Milano stays with the Bills, but they lose, um, they lose uh, Tremaine Edmonds today so that's a big loss and then uh yeah so trying to go through there so i mean uh those are some of the people i mean the one piece for for myself as a niner fan is javon hargrave comes from the philadelphia eagles um originally was drafted by pittsburgh played for them then he went to philly and had a great part in that defense that got them to the super bowl uh to help them get to the super bowl and now he leaves philly and is coming to the San Francisco 49ers to solidify the interior of a line that, of course, we know has a defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa. And you have the best linebacker duo in Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw in the league. And then you have all these other pieces there that you have Eric Armstead, uh, you have and then who's another great uh, solid interior guy. He's not he's not as good as DeForest Buckner who, of course, they had a few years ago and they traded. But he's definitely serviceable, and he's gotten better as the years have gone on. So now that defensive line just gets even scarier, uh, and it's a big pickup, four-year deal, $84 million, but a guy that is going to immediately make a, de- a difference for the 49ers and help Nick Bosa out, try to get some more sacks, and um, try to take some of these quarterbacks' heads off in the NFC West like uh, whoever the hell LA is going to have her you know, stat Padford uh, with a gimpy arm. And then you have Seattle with Geno Smith and then Arizona with Ky- whatever is left of Kyler Murray. And then who is going to be their, their spot, their fill in starter prior to him coming back. But yeah, you had uh, the loss you had there, uh, Josh, it's going to be uh, something to go and have to replace a tackle for, uh, for Baker, I mean, for Baker, my fault. For Trevor. <laughs> Trevor, my fault. That's a big mistake. I apologize for that right there. But yeah, Trevor, uh, he's, um, I don't think that, I think they knew they, you got, you guys knew you weren't going to be in that market to pay that much money for the guy. But I think it's open season. I talked about it offline that Orlando Brown is a free agent now. And uh, he's, I think, a better player in general. He played left tackle for them this year at Kansas City, and uh, they won the Super Bowl. He's been in the league. He has experience. He has lineage, of course. His dad played in the league. So he's a guy I would look at. There's some other players out there at the tackle position, which I think you could get at a more reasonable rate and solidify your line and give uh, Trev the help he needs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, with Jawan Taylor being signed off in free agency I means big loss for sure because he had a uh, really good season last year um didn't give up a whole lot of pressures and uh sacks and uh 
you know, had a career gear and the first, you know, three years of him, uh, in the Jaguars, so he wasn't really that great. And a lot of people were questioning him, but, you know, he came out and played this year and, uh, played inspired him. You know, part of his story, you know, he lost, I think he lost his father the previous year. So I think, you know, this year he was really motivated to go out and, um, you know, play for his, you know, his family name, his father. Uh, so I think that's part of the reason why he played so well this year, but, um, yeah, it's a big loss for sure, but at least, you know, they get a compensatory pick for the first time in uh, 13 years. Uh, so I, that's good, I guess. Um, and I guess it's also kind of a good problem to have when you have players getting signed off to other teams in free agency, um, not because you can't uh, or you freeze to pay them the amount of money that they get paid, but also uh, because um you know, they, they just became too, too valuable for your team and, um, everything. So, um, I mean, it sucks to lose a player like that, but, um, you know, sometimes, um, they end up taking the bigger deal, uh, which obviously he got the bag, um, uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs and everything. So, um, it's going to be interesting to see who they replace him with. And there's talks of going in the draft and maybe going offensive line at, pick 24 uh, in the uh, the NFL draft or um, going in internal. Obviously they have uh, Cam Robinson at left tackle and Walker Little was um, backup left tackle, but he also can swing to the right tackle side. So there's question there and he's proven that he could start. Obviously he took over Cam Robinson on the left tackle side um, after the Dallas Cowboy game through the uh, playoffs. Uh, So he was able to get a pretty significant amount of game experience. Um, starting on the offensive line. So um, just from that point alone, um, they have options internally to go uh, and replace uh, Jawan Taylor. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do there and um, how is that going to affect the offensive line play going forward. Uh, But, you know, I expect them to figure that one out. And um, maybe obviously they have a competent coaching staff and uh, competent players around them. So I think, you know, with Trevor, obviously good quarterback play is able to kind of mask some of the uh, deficiencies in the offensive line. Uh, so we'll see if they're able to do that there. Um, but definitely yeah, a big loss. And then also you mentioned Chris Manhurts, uh, tight end, blocking tight end for the Jags, uh, going uh, to the Broncos. So that's going to be interesting signing um, there to have to replace him. How do they do that? He's a good blocking tight end and did a lot in the running game. So be interested to see uh, how they are, you know, what kind of uh, player they go after and, uh, you know, the free agency period or if they go in the draft to try to replace because uh, that's also a key uh, player there. And then on the other end, you know, on defense, uh, Arden Key is a free agent. <clears throat> Do they go and uh, they go and sign him uh, to a longer term contract, you know, longer than a year? Um, would like to see if, you know, they can secure him. Obviously, he said he wanted to stay, but he's also, I think he's got like uh, at least a few teams that seem like they want him. Uh, so let's see if Jacksonville can offer him good good money and everything. But um, I think the part of the issue with Jacksonville right now, um, I mean, obviously they're not looking to make any big signings like they did last year and the year before. Uh, but you know they have not as much calorie, uh, you know, sa- salary cap uh, space. So um, can they make enough room to be able to uh, keep some of the free agent players that were on short term deals? Uh, the last couple of years and are now up for e-signing. Can they do that to be able to make a push for, you know, possible championship run uh, there and everything. And obviously they've already done some restructuring with uh, Calvin Ridley uh, being on the active roster now uh, after being reinstated by the league. Uh, And then they restructured a bunch of other players like uh, Christian Kirk. They signed Evan Ingram to the franchise tag for now. Uh, So we'll see if they, uh, renegotiate and sign a better deal uh, later on, but um, we'll see if um, you know how they decide to go and uh, you know if they lose some of these other players. Like you know they're potentially looking uh, a replacement for nickel corner, replacing Trey Herndon, and I heard um, they're trying to go with either Sean Murphy Bunting or uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson as two names have been floated around that could uh, they could be looking at potentially signing. So I we'll have to see, but you know definitely a uh, uh, big loss there with uh, Jawan Taylor. He's a former Florida Gator there too, so he's going to be going uh, to uh, 
a completely different state and everything. He's, I think he's been from Florida. He's from the uh, Space Coast down where I'm at right now uh, and been playing for the Gators and then Jacksonville. So, um, of course, now going to the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, best best of luck there. And, you know, hopefully uh, he does well for Patrick Mahomes and protecting him, uh, and, you know, going to left tackle. So we'll have to see. But, yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting time right now in free agency in the NFL for sure. Yeah, definitely in the new league, league new league year. Here we go. We got a bunch of tongue twisters going on for both of us. Uh, starts in two days, so all these things will be official at that point. So there's a lot more conjecture and things to look at uh, with the league and people that we're going to see uh, move around. Uh, might be some other trades or opportunities with that as well. We'll pick up on that next week on episode 161 of the GSP. All right, so let's get into the roundup here. Uh, Got a few of these things here. First is the NHRA uh, Gator Nationals, Amelie Motor Oil Gator Nationals. We'll start with the the Top Fuel uh, Pet Boys All-Star call-out, which saw Josh Hart get the victory over Mike Salinas. Um, Salinas smokes the tires there uh, in that final, but it went a little bit different for him on Sunday. Uh, Josh Hart beat uh, Austin Proc in the first round, and and Brittany forced the defending world champion in the semifinals. And Salinas on his way to that eighty thousand uh, dollar check from Pep Boys. Uh, so good for him to start the season. I was going to go through this stupid web spin. Uh, going to go through, go and look up. Yeah, factory stock pro mod. Factory stock, I think, was um. What's his face? Uh, Stanfield, Aaron Stanfield won that one. Justin Bond beats J.R. Gray Jr. in Pro Mod. And then I'm trying to see qualifying order. Well, you don't see that. Uh, factory search. Uh, yeah, damn website. Um, go into Top Alcohol Dragster just to you know, get into that. So Julie Natis wins the race. Uh, finish. She started second, um, and Jacqueline Frick was third. Cody Crone started uh, qualified number one with a five sixteen with a two two seventy eight point nine two. Tony Stewart qualified eighth at five thirty two with a three two hundred seventy point two one miles an hour, just ahead of Megan Smith, uh, who got him at Vegas last year. So wow, Jasmine Salinas didn't even make the show. That is a cute, yeah. She didn't even make the show. That's bad. Um, And then in, uh, let's see here, Top Alcohol Dragster in Eliminations Round 1. Yeah, Tony Stewart beats Megan Smith, uh, gets a little bit of revenge there. Good light and good run, 529, 274. Trying to go through here. Damn, Jackie Frick, Corey McCulloch goes and wins there. What is it? Gets a great light. Beats Dan Mercy, a former top alcohol dragster champion. Crone driving the Robinsons, and then Julie Nattis. So a bunch of bunch of ladies in the in the top alcohol dragster category to look at. Hopefully, some of them might get a shot in the uh, top fuel or funny car or something. And Tony Stewart lost to Cody Crone in um, in the second round. Red lit. in the process. Threw away a five twenty three. It wasn't going to be enough anyways. Um, he had a better 60 foot, but then he started giving up incrementally after that. Uh, so unfortunate there, but he'll be back for the next race, of course. In uh, Pro Stock Motorcycle, Gage Herrera, the replacement for um, for Angel Sampe, went and won the uh, won the pro what is it Pro Stock Motorcycle category uh, for Vance and Hines Yamaha start or Vance and Hines. Yama. Vance and Hines uh, Suzuki started on the number one spot and uh, beat Ron Torno, his teammate Eddie Krawick, Gianna Avaristo in the semifinals, and then beats uh, Angie Smith in the final. Angie Smith was able to got a red light from John Hall, then a red light from Joey Gladstone, and she f- just absolutely got off. She basically, I think she shook on the starting line and didn't run it, and she ran against Chase Van Sant and ran a good run there. 
but then couldn't hold up to Herrera, who had a ton of speed this weekend. In pro stock, Troy Coughlin Jr. started number one, finished number one. Uh, so he's the uh, one of the members of the elite performance crew. Beats Larry Morgan in round one, Derek Kramer in round two, Dallas Glenn in round three, and Mason McGahey in the final. McGahey got uh, Greg Anderson on the tree and had a little better rea- uh, elapsed time anyway. Beat his dad, what do you call him? Mason beat Fernando Quadra, Kyle Koretsky, and Greg Anderson. So two thirds of the new triumph, the new team that uh, Greg Anderson formed with some pro mod guy there. And funny car, Matt Hagen defends his uh, Gator Nationals title with uh, the victory here yesterday. Hagen did it from the number five spot, beating Tim Wilkerson, Matt, uh, Bob Tasca, Alexis DeJoria, and thanks, and um, J.R. Todd on his way to the victory. Ron Caps qualified number one, but uh, smoked the tires in the semifinals, or, I mean the second round to lose to DeJoria. Uh, John Force started second, lost to Chad Green in the second round. He got treed. Um, and J.R. Todd beat Blake, Blake Alexander, Robert Height, who had issues, then uh, beats Chad Green as well and gets to the final there. So former funny car champion. And then in top fuel, it was uh, Mike Salinas, who got the victory on Sunday over Steve Torrance. Salinas from the eight, number eight hole, uh, beat uh, Justin Ashley, who was a top four finisher in points last year, then beat um, Brittany Forrest, the defending world champion, Leah Pruitt in the semifinals on his way to beating Steve Torrance. Torrance was from the number two spot, beat Scott Palmer, Tony Schumacher, Doug Coletta in, on his way. So the next race in the national uh, for the NHRA for the National Tour will be at Arizona Nationals, the last time they'll race at Wild Horse Pass Motorsports Park. So a top fuel, funny car, pro stock, um, no top alcohol dragster, so no Tony won't be in that one, no pro stock motorcycle, um, but they'll be back the following week. Or The top alcohol dragster will be back at uh, the Lucas Oil Winter Nationals at Pomona, which is definitely not in the winter anymore uh, by that point. And we'll get back to that in a couple weeks' time. In Extreme E, they ran in Saudi for the for first two races of the season of the, the Desert x The qualifying, I mean, I don't really care about the qualifying. I want to know what the heck. Qualifying, off in heat one, heat two. What does that mean? Like, it says qualify. Okay, there you go. That's what I want to see. That's what I want. Confusing. Extreme E. All right. So the grand final... Um, in race one, saw the Veloce, Veloce team of Molly Taylor and Kevin Hansen win over the Signs team of Layla Sands, Matthias Ekstrom, and then uh, Rosberg team of Kotulinski and Christofferson, uh, Christina Gutierrez and Fraser McConnell, the new duo at uh, uh, X44 Vita Carbon Racing, and then the Hummer EV, Chip Ganassi Racing duo of Amanda Sorens and RJ Anderson, the new combination, finished fifth. And then in race in race two, I'm going to bring that up here for Extreme E. Their next race will be in May, so we'll have a while to go before that couple months' time. And then the grand final for that race saw the uh, saw Layla Sands, Matias Ekstrom get the win. Uh, for the science team, and then the Veloce team second, and then Rossberg team third again. Uh, the apt Cupra team with Clara Anderson and Nasser Alatia finished fourth, and then the Chip Ganassi team finished fifth again. So the points right now sees a Veloce team and tied with the science team. Uh, Rossberg's team is in third. Hamilton's team is fourth, and then Chip Ganassi's team is fifth. Getting further into the points there, uh, then you have the App team sixth, McLaren seventh, Carl Cox Motorsports eighth, uh, what do you call, uh, Jensen Button's team, and the Andretti team are tied for ninth in points. So they'll be looking for more at the next round. In uh, 
in the supercars, there was a disqualification in race one. It was dominated by the Red Bull team, but they were both disqualified for an infraction. And uh, so they went from first and second, Van Gisbergen and Brock Feeney, to 24th and 25th, handing the win to Cam Waters and the Monster Energy Tickford team. Uh, Chaz Moster in the Walk and Chandretti United Mobile One Optus Racing Ford Mustang number 25 finishes second. His return to Ford, the Ford camp. Brody Kostecki in third for the Erebus Coca Cola Racing team and his teammate Will Brown right behind him. Andre Heimgartner rounds out the top five. So three Chevys, two Fords, then three Chevys or four or five. You have five Chevys. The next Ford was James Courtney. Uh, four Fords in the top 10. Uh, the uh, Shell V Power Racing team had a brutal uh, day there in race one. Only 11th for Will Davison and Anton Di Pasquale uh, did not classify amongst, what is it, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars that didn't classify and get a classification in race one. In race two, I'd go and in the thrifty Newcastle 500 used to be the final race of the season. Now it's the first race of the season. Um, yeah. And Shane Van Gisbergen goes and uh, comes back with a victory uh, over Mostert. Uh, Van Gisbergen started fifth and uh, moved up to win uh, beats Mostert. So a good start to the season for him. David Reynolds rounds out the podium after starting on pole. James Golding, Finishes fourth, Brock Feeney fifth, Brody Kostecki, uh, trying to go through here, or Tim Slade uh, for the Newlon Racing team. So Newlon Racing fourth and ninth. So I'm trying to go through here. Cam Waters, after winning race one, ends up 12th in race two. The Shell V Power teams finishes 16th with Anton Di Pasquale and 19th with Will Davison. So a pretty bad uh, start to the season for them. Chaz Mostert has the early points lead over Brody Kostecki, Cam Waters, David Reynolds, and Andre Heimgartner tied for fourth. Uh, Shane Van Gisbergen is 11th, but I doubt that'll stay. Uh, next, they'll be racing at uh, Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix weekend. Figure he'll get up uh, up there pretty good by, um, by uh, that next race. Trying to see who else best wins in yeah. The birth, yeah, yeah, race two, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm not even going to bother with that. Go through to Supercross at uh, Indy, AMA Supercross. Cooper Webb, as I mentioned, has taken the points lead by one over Eli Tomac after his victory uh, at Indianapolis. The, let's see, I don't know why I'm going to qualify. I don't want to see all that. There you go. That's what I want. Or no, he didn't win the race. My, my fault. I thought he won the race, but he took the lead because Eli Tomac finished eighth. Ken Roxon gets the win after taking the whole shot. His first win for his new effort. Justin Barsha second. Cooper Webb third. Aaron Plessinger, his teammate fourth. Jason Anderson and Adam C. and Cerullo, the two uh, Monster Energy Kawasaki's fifth and sixth. Christian Craig on a Husqvarna seventh ahead of Eli Tomac. Justin Hill and Chase Sexton, who was the fastest qualifier. So that's uh, so he lost some ground there. He's now 13 points behind in the point standings. Then you have Jason Anderson. Ken Roxon with the win gets within two points of Jason Anderson. Um, Barsha, Plessinger, that group is only separated from fourth to seventh by 12 points. So intrigue, there's some intrigue with that. But really, the battle between Cooper Webb, Eli Tomac, and Chase Sexton is what we have to keep on watching halfway through the uh, season right now uh, you have detroit seattle and uh, detroit and seattle upcoming and then they will have a week off before going to glendale atlanta motor speedway uh, metlife stadium and uh, nashville denver and then the championship final at rice eccles stadium uh, to end the season in 250s the results of i'm trying to go with and I did. I want. Uh, okay, so there you go. Two fifties. There are the official results in two fifty East. Hunter Lawrence gets the win over Nate Thrasher. What a name! Jordan Smith, Jeremy Martin, Max Anstey, 
Uh, so three Yamahas sandwiched by two Hondas. Chris Blows for Kawasaki finishes sixth. Uh, Danger Boy Deegan, Hayden Deegan finished seventh. Tom Vial, eighth. Colin Park and Cody Shock from Dover, Delaware. And no, they had, yeah, so Dover, Delaware there. Uh, finishes tenth. The standings in the 250 East. Hunter Lawrence is up by 22 points on Max Anstey, Nate Thrasher, 32 points back. Jordan Smith, 33. Then Hayden Deegan and Jeremy Martin are 35 points back. So it's a very good battle between those four riders uh, there as they start going back out to the West Coast. So Jet Lawrence will now get to go and start doing some more work. Pretty certain it'd be the first time ever that brothers have won both Supercross titles uh, that if and when that happens. Uh, trying to go here, look at all that. So I went through all those. So we'll do preview of the 12 hours of Sebring. And uh, WEC briefly here because World Endurance Championship is got a bunch of new uh, new cars with the with the uh, new prototype category the whatever the convergence with uh, twenty twenty in twenty twenty three between IMSA and World Endurance Championship the prologue took place as I said yesterday and then uh, they'll be racing here on Friday. To, for the first uh, Sebring thousand kilometers, then they will be back. Uh, they'll be back in a month's time to race at the uh, at Portimao. So that'll be they'll race there. Then Spa, Le Mans, Monza. What is this? Yes, Monza, Fuji, and Bahrain to end the season. I'm trying to go and get the uh, WC. <laughs> okay, so season. WEC, so there's that. Trying to look at the regulation classes, boarding regulations. Wow, that's a cool looking car. Um, yeah, it's wonky enough. Um, I'm just looking for an entry list. Like, can I get that? That'd be nice. Uh, I'm going to go there then. Uh, go to, uh, yeah, so there's Byron. What, uh, McLaughlin leads Penske 1 2 in a test. Uh, Wintel Chad Chess Infinity debut, MSA. Uh-huh, WC. So we will, yeah, we'll go here. Uh, the how we're tiring for virtual nine by eight out of Sunday's prologue. Toyota and C ring test on top from Cadillac. Um, I'm gonna see there. I guess there. Do they count that? Or no, that's from last year. So it'd be nice to see the. Uh, okay. All right. So W's. Okay. So there we go. So those are all in the prototype category and they're running the numbers like that okay so are these are all the proto wow that's just strictly the lmp1 lmp1 class oh, that's not one yeah so alex lynn earl bamber earl bamba and richard richard westbrook are in the chip ganassi cadillac number two shack Villeneuve uh returns he'll be in the van wall car with tom dillman and esteban Guerrieri. Michael Christensen, Frederick McAwicki, and Dane Cameron will be in the number five Penske Porsche. Their team car will be Andre Lauderer, Lawrence Fantor, and Kevin Estra. So that'll be a solid lineup. The Toyotas, uh, their usual guys there, Kamue Kobayashi, Jose Maria Lopez, and Mike Conway in the seven. Sebastian Buemi, Brendan Hartley, and Rio Hirakawa in the number eight. Uh, the Prema Power Team, number nine, LMP2, is Philippe Ugron, a 20-year-old Bent Viscal, formerly of Formula 2, Formula 3, and Andrea Calderari, a uh, Lamborghini factory driver. The Vector Sport, number 10, will have Gabriel Aubrey and Ryan Cullen. Philippe Albuquerque for United Auto Sport, number 22, with Philip Hansen and Oliver Jarvis. Or no, with Philip Hansen, Oliver Jarvis, and Tom Blomquist, along with Josh Pearson in the number 23. David Heinmeier Hansen, Pietro Fittipaldi and Oliver Rasmussen in the number 28 for Joda Sport LMP2. Audi Sport Team WRT, that's a LMP2 competitor. Uh, Ferdinand Hasberg, Sean Galeal, Robin Freins. And uh, they're going to, I think they're changing over them in there. Intel, Inter Europol competition. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, Mamo Rojas, Andre Negrau, and Ollie Caldwell in the Alpine LMP2. And then Matthew Vaxvier, Charles Mia, Milesi, and Julian Canal in the 36. 
Bobby Kubica, Louis Delatraz, and Rui Andrade are in the second Team WRT uh, 41 car. Number 48 is Yif- Ye Yefe, David Beckman, and Will Stevens. Miguel Molina, Nicholas Nielsen, and Antonio Fuco are the number 50 Ferrari drivers in the prototype category. In number 51, Alexander, Alessandro Perguidi, Antonio Giovinazzi of Formula One fame, and James Collado in the 51. So the new, uh, what do you call, hypercar Ferrari program. Dorian Pin, the lady driver from the Iron Dames, driving for Prema, number 63, with Danny Caviet and Mirko Bortolotti. Mikkel Jensen, Paul DeResta, and John Eric Vernon, the number 93 Peugeot. And uh, number 94, Loic Duval, Nico Muller, and Gustavo Menezes in the 94 Peugeot. And then the Glickenhaus team of Oliver Olivier Pla, Roman Duma, and Ryan Briscoe. So that's just a part of the driver lineup there. That's some of the prototype drivers uh, in terms of uh, that deal. We had the prologue. I don't put anything like that. So, all right. We'll get into it more when they actually have the... They get some of the information put up here on this website. Doesn't seem like they have it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, results, the prologue from Sebring. We can bring that up then, might as well. Um, it was just testing, I guess, is what it is. Uh, the Toyotas were up front. Uh, they have essentially six tenths. On, uh, they have a tenth. I mean, the number eight is ahead of the seven by just over a tenth. The... Uh, Cadillac was the best of the rest, uh, 0.6 tenths of a second behind. The Ferrari, number 50, was just over a second. The Porsche, number 5, 1.5 seconds. The number 6, 1.6. Peugeot, Team WRT, gets sneaks in there. The Jota Sport, number 48, on bad year tires. Uh, I guess that's for everybody in LMP2, I guess. Uh yeah, the Van Wall car only did 20 laps, so that's promising. Uh, the Glickenhaus team, I guess, had some issues, only 18 laps for them. In GTD, or I mean not GTD, but uh, GTM, we have uh, the GR Racing Porsche, then the AF Corsa Ferrari, Project One Porsche with Gunnar Jeanette, Iron Lynx team, and then the Iron Dames team, they moved over to Porsche. The other AF course of Ferrari, then the Corvette, number 33 of Ben Keating, uh, what is it, Nicholas Verone, whoever he is, and Nicky Katzberg, you know, three Ferraris there, and the other Ferrari, number 51, didn't even come out to run any laps, so that's kind of a brutal deal there. We'll see how that goes. Uh, three categories now, Hypercar, LMP2, and GTEM in the WEC. Let's get into IMSA for the 12 hours of Sebring. I'm going to move this thing, trying to move this thing along a bit. I'm guilty of making it way too long-winded. Let's see over here. This website is just outstanding. I I, I always say that about IndyCar and IMSA. Their websites are just not great at all. 12 hours of Sebring. The entry list for them, they'll have the Porsche Carrera Cup. They'll also have the Michelin Pilot Challenge. They have 26 LMP type cars, and then they have 28 GTD cars. So 54 total. Usual suspects there. The 60 got a huge penalty with the air pressure running him too low and not reporting. Yeah. reporting Big uh, penalty. Yeah, so basically they're having to essentially start from scratch. Uh, they'll run with uh, their usual lineup of Tom Blomquist and Colin Braun, and then Elio Castroneves will be their third driver. Otherwise, nothing. I mean, the only difference from this race in the 12 and the 24 is that we only have three drivers. Uh, the Cadillac teams ran three drivers anyway. Uh, Borde, Van Der Zand, and Scott Dixon in the 01. The Porsches also. Tandy, Jamine, and Dane Cameron will be running double duty. So he'll need a lot of endurance. Uh, Matt Campbell, Felipe Nazarin, and Michael Christensen, he also will need a little bit of endurance. Albuquerque and Delatraz are running the 1,000 kilometer the day before. Uh, so that's interesting for the Conica Manol to Acura team. Then you have Philip Ng, Augusto Farfis, Marco Vittman for BMW number 
24, Connor D. Filippi, Nick Gilloy, and Sheldon Vanderlinda in the number 25, Pepo Durrani, Alexander Sims, and Jack Aitken in the Wheel and Engineering Cadillac. So in LMP2, there's eight cars. Uh, Scott McLaughlin will be racing for Tower in the uh, number eight car. Ben Hanley will be running. A uh, former IndyCar driver will be driving the CrowdStrike car number 04. They had that photo finish there at the end of the Rolex in the LMP2 category. You had uh, Dwight Merriman, Brian DL, Christian Rasmussen in the 18. Stephen Thomas, Mikkel Jensen, Scott Uffaker in the 11. Uh, Josh Pearson's running double duty. Uh, he'll be in the TDS number 35. Eric Lux. Devlin D. Francesco and Pietro Fittipaldi in the Rick Ware number 51. Ben Keating will be running in, uh, definitely running in the LMP2 number 52. PR1 Matheson wins car. Then I'm trying to look through for LMP3. Uh, Tonus Kazmitz, he's been around forever. Matt Bell, uh, Matt Bell in the 13. AWA, um, Garrett Grist. Ari Bologna, JR3, number 30. Jao Barbosa in the 33 for Sean Creek. Then uh, Jared Andretti, Gabby Chavez in the number 36 for Andretti Autosport. No drivers announced as of yet for the 43. Uh, Gar Robinson, Felipe Fraga, Josh Burdon in the Riley 74. JDC Miller, 85. Bechtel Scheimer, Vanderheim, Dan Goldberg. Who in GT, GTD Pro, only eight cars. Uh, Antonio Garcia, T- Jordan Taylor, and Tommy Milner in the Corvette Racing number three. Klaus Bockler, Patrick Pile, Lawrence Vantor in the FAF Motorsports Porsche. Jack Hawksworth, Ben Barnico, Kyle Kirkwood in the Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Ross Gunn, Alex Riberos, David Pittard, Harda Racing Aston. And uh, Aston Martins, of course, they, in, they had a good uh, run there in the Rolex. Uh, Porsches definitely were on the back foot. Mercedes were a little bit, were of course ahead generally. Uh, Daniel Serra, David Rigon, Gabriel Casagrande, and the Risi Competizione Ferrari, Frank Pereira, Jordan Pepper, Roman Grosjean, and the Iron Links Lamborghini, Daniel Yucadella, Joel Gunan, and Mauro Engel, and the WeatherTech Mercedes, who won uh, in the pro category at Daytona, and then Bill Oberlin. Chandler Hall and John Edwards in the number 95 Turner Motorsports uh, BMW. 20 cars in the GT Daytona field. Trying to see here. I mean, the Paul Miller cars, of course, Paul Miller Racings from Jersey. Brian Sellers, Madison Snow, uh, Corey Lewis, Monte Calvo, Frankie Monte Calvo, Aaron Teal, it's Parker Thompson, the Vassar Sullivan Lexus, Hardwick, Halen, Robichon, Wright Motorsports, Porsche. Look to see what... They do for Porsche and some of these other teams that felt like they were pretty much screwed at Daytona. Uh, I'm just trying to see here. Racer Judge, Wayne Taylor Racing Acura. Um, look through some of these other people. Kelly Moss team with Riley. You know, Julian Andlauer. I don't really know any of them. So the Iron Dames team looking for a better result uh, this coming weekend after a rough uh, Rolex. Frey, Sarah Rahel Frey, Sarah Bovi, and Michelle Gadding, uh, Seb Prio, Gunnar Jeanette, AO Racing Porsche. You know, let's see some of these other ones. Yeah, Sheena Monk, Catherine Legg, and Mark Miller, and the Gradient Racing Acura. I think I was making JG Wentworth jokes. I don't know how it came up. I think it must have been during bowling. Because um, then I started having, yeah, so it must have came up during bowling. Uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, 20 cars there, anybody can really, it's a wide open field if the balance of performance is right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these prototypes hold up, the GTP cars hold up on the rough track that is Sebring. Last but not least, we'll get into Formula 2 here at uh, Jetta, and uh, they'll run, they'll be running there, and, um, no, other stuff, electric, well, whatever, electric wheel guns, good, good, great, whatever. Um, as went over, Ralph Boshong and Teo Pocher were the uh, winners at uh, at uh, Bahrain in the first race of the season. So just to go over that, yeah, Pocher and Boshong are top two in points. Zane Maloney, Kush Miney, Richard Vashore, your top five, and... Uh, 
They say we got guys like uh, Owas, uh, Artur Leclerc, Victor Martins, Jay Andruvla, Enzo Fittipaldi, Juan Manuel Correa scored points at the last race. Uh, Jack Dewin, uh, Jack Crawford, Brad Benavides, all those uh, guys' uh, names, two of them, the American drivers, of course, and uh, looking for some points here this coming weekend. Jack Dewin, uh, the Alpine junior, trying to go and establish himself uh, here early on in this season. But, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, at uh, Jetta, it's a, a lot of carnage. Usually takes place there um, with the with the um, the speed of the track and how the sight lines and everything they say they kept on. They've made improvements to the sight lines, but I'll believe it when I see it. So we'll go from there. We'll get into all that next week. So let's get into the uh, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix there, Josh. Uh, it's been a controversial race for many reasons, not just the track, but the crap that goes on around the track. Um, I'll let you pick first. I kind of know who you're going to pick to win. Um, but after that, I guess, is where the actual intrigue starts. Um, I mean, I, it's a track, what, last year, Max Verstappen won uh, the race after a battle with the uh, Charles Leclerc, I think that was uh, Sergio Perez's first career pole there last year as well, after I don't know how many years of driving Formula One, so good for him on that. But I think uh, we all know what's going to happen there, and uh, it is what it is, but kind of sucks. But um, what are your picks for uh, for the race here on this weekend on, uh, in qualifying? What do you think in qualifying top three and also the race? Top three. Yeah, I think for the race, uh, I'm going to pick uh, Daniel Ricciardo's teammate, Max Verstappen. So, um, yeah, I think Max wins for the third, second race in a row to start the season. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that could be possible unless, like, he has a catastrophic failure, uh, which could happen, but, you know, I kind of doubt it, and um, especially early on this, this year. But, uh, yeah, I think practice qualifying um yeah i'm curious to see what you know ferrari's pace is going to be like uh this year in uh qualifying you know the last year it seemed like um they were good in qualifying but they didn't have the same type of pace that red bull especially for stopping had uh in race trims so you know i i'm i'm gonna say that um charles leclerc wins the pole uh this weekend he takes pole position um i I think that's certainly possible, but I guess, you know, race trim, Red Bull, you know, it seems like they've just figured something out um, to be faster than uh, everybody. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with those picks. And then um, for the rest of the podium, uh, I'm going to put, um, you know, I'll put Charles Leclerc second place pole, uh, or, you know, second place he wins the pole, and then third place uh, Checo Perez. So, yeah, pretty easy there. Red Bull sandwich uh, with their ferrari as the um middle there so i'd concur on the fish lips pick uh i'll go one step further and say a win pull um over Charles leclerc so we'll just swap that one out and we'll just save the save the resistance there he'll get the pole he'll get the win i'll have to do the post-race recap on grid talk and not try to throw up on myself when downey's celebrating about his his boy winning another race uh in terms of the other two spots for the top three in qualifying i do i'll say that yeah i said leclerc and then i think fernando alonso will be third in qualifying now in the race i'll say max are stopping sergio perez and fernando alonso which was exactly the same podium at bahrain that'll be the podium this coming weekend uh at jetta so that'll be great if you like any of those drivers. If you're a fan of Mercedes, not so much. So there's that. Uh, we'll talk about it, of course, at uh, um, next week's episode. Yeah, they had IndyCar testing there. And, of course, what do you know? The Penske cars are fast. Um, and then and water is wet. So, yeah, let's get into... So now with that, let's get into the NASCAR triple header. There's... Uh, of course, it's going to be a, a lot of, I would think there's a bit of carnage because it's 
that's a super speedway type race now. Let's go back to front. The truck race will be uh, the first race of the uh, weekend. They'll run at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, of course, weather permitting. And they'll run, what is it, 36 trucks for 36 spots, so nobody's going to fail to qualify. Akinori Ogata's in the G2G truck, so he he must really hate life. Um, or his check cleared, one or the other. Um, we'll see if the engine engine works. Uh, I'm trying to go through here. Uh, nobody's in the 34 for Ryum. It uh, doesn't really matter even if there are somebody in there. Uh, nobody in the number one as of yet for Tricon. Uh, Chris Wright is back in the 02 to crash. Caden Honeycutt in the 04. Um, all these other guys, that's regulars, regulars. John Hunter in the 17. Mason Maggio in the 20 for Youngs. Josh Rayum is actually driving the 22 AM racing Ford. Uh, I'm trying to see through here. Vargas driving this weekend in his ride for the On Point Motorsports in the number 30. Looks like he has a, a a woman crew chief, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, Mason Massey in a thirty three, nobody cares. Um, Zane Smith, of course, the defending series champion. Bailey Curry in the forty one for Nice, and uh, Jack Wood in the fifty one for Kyle Busch. Again, he'll run the majority of the races. So Timmy Hill running, of course, his his deal. Yeah, so that's the the field there. Nothing major changes wise in terms of drivers but so far this year um, in the truck series two races down you had the defending champion in uh, zane smith win at daytona in a rain shortened race and then kyle bush won at vegas so now you have atlanta trying to remember who won i can't oh it was um it was uh cory heim won the uh, truck series race there uh last year I think he moved Chandler Smith to do it. Uh, so that was the deal. So um, we'll go with, um, I'll go and uh, start this one. So so you can see if the, you can warm up the algorithm there, Josh. Uh, for me, I'm going to go, <sighs> I I kind of feel like I'm feeling a, a Toyota victory for some reason because a Ford has won, a Chevy has won so far this year. I feel like it's going to be a Toyota victory. I don't know if it's going to be, uh, I mean, I don't think it would be a, out of the realm for John Hunter to do it, but I'm going to say Corey Heim repeats. He has Scott Zipidelli as his crew chief, and uh, he gets his first win for Tricon Garage here on uh, Saturday and solidifies his spot in the playoff. Now, my wild card selection uh, could be almost anybody, uh, really. Um, that isn't a major name yet. I think. Uh, my wild card selection would will be I'll go there. I'll go and say Jake Garcia. Why not? That 35 truck ran well with William Clyde Elliott the second at Daytona. And also he ran well in his truck debut at Las Vegas. And the Mac and Alley team seems to be much faster this year. So uh, I'll go with that. I'll go with uh, uh, Corey Heim to win and uh, Jake Garcia as my wild card. How about you, Josh, in regards to the truck race here at Atlanta? Yeah, I think for truck racing here at Atlanta, um, I mean, you really have to look at drivers who are good at super speedway racing and have you know had uh, a lot of experience, which there isn't really a whole lot of experience here in the truck series as far as you know super speedway uh, experience. But you know, I have to just go with the veteran who knows knows how to get it done on the big uh, big tracks and. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with uh, John Hunter Nemechek uh, winning here. So teammate to Corey Heim. I mean, technically, I think they were teammates last year, although I think John Hunter um, fell lap down or something but was helping in the finish. But uh, I think, yeah, John Hunter Nemechek comes out and wins uh, this uh, steals one from the truck regulars, uh, which wouldn't be surprising considering, you know, it's Atlanta and uh, everything. Uh, so... Yeah, that's that's who I pick uh, to win, uh, and you know what? I'll go with uh, go with Raja Karuth as a wild card here this weekend. Um, you know, I think could be a good event. 
uh, for him, you know, get a wild card finish, um, potentially, uh, you know, the, uh, draft and everything help, uh, you know, get him up to the front. So I think, uh, definitely could be a wild card, uh, pick, uh, there for him this weekend. Yeah, and I mean, him and his teammate Daniel Dye, the rookies, they both ran all right, but they got into a couple of the incidents at Daytona together, it seemed, which didn't help their cause, but uh, that'll be something to look at. I mean, obviously, the Kyle Busch trucks were really fast at Daytona, so who knows, maybe Chase Purdy can pull one out of his ass, or um, or Jack Wood, but uh, we will see with that. Um, Xfinity Series has... 39 cars for 38 spots. Of course, Timmy, the 74, the 66, and a couple others have been the ones that have struggled to make make the, make the shows this year early. Uh, Kyle Weatherman will be in the 0-2 again. Uh, yeah, yeah, Justin Haley will be in the number 10 this weekend for Colleague. Ryan Truex is going to be in the 19 after another runner-up finish. Seltzer, uh, Connor Mozak uh, running the 24 for Sam Hunt. What's it called? Uh, you know, Gase and Emerling, the partners in the team, are running their cars this weekend. Uh, Joe Graff in the 38. Caesar Baccarella trying to run, uh, get into the show so they don't. Oh, they withdrew the car. Okay. So they had, had to qualify on time. And uh, once they figured out that they probably weren't going to make it, they said, screw it. Uh, probably at the ex- helping either the MBM or the the team with the what the hell Mike Harmon team the seventy four who doesn't have a driver yet uh, Sage Karam I I don't think he was in the car at Daytona I'm not I don't remember offhand but uh, he'll be in at Atlanta then you have yeah you know, Timmy Hill in the sixty six seventy four no driver as of yet Chad Chastain making. His Xfinity debut for DGM uh, in the 91, and then Kyle Sieg in the 28. So Josh, I'll uh, leave it up, uh, leave it out to you. Uh, of course, Austin Hill won this race last year in the spring. I don't really remember. I think he might have won in the in the summer race too. For all I know, I don't even remember off the top of my head. But who are you looking for for your um, picks here at Atlanta for the Raptor King of Tough 250? Yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be a tough race uh, in Xfinity, and it's a very, you know, volatile event, especially with, um, you know, Atlanta. I mean, it's going to be the theme all weekend um, with Atlanta, but, I mean, I, you can't go wrong with Austin Hill. He just knows how to get it done uh, on super speedways, and this is a drafting track now, so it's hard to pick against him. I mean, he's done pretty well. Uh, at this race, you know, uh, since they've, you know, gone to restrict your plates. So uh, I'll pick him. Uh, as far as wild card goes, uh, I mean, it's tough, tough to round, you know, go around and pick a lot of these guys as a wild card. But, uh, you know, I'll go with Kaz Grala as a wild card this weekend. Uh, I think he's definitely got to um, pick. You know, and as wild card, you know, could happen, you know, get a top 15 or top 10 surprise at the end of the day. Uh, and by the way, I do have the wild card or not the wild card, but I have the algorithm pick um, for the truck series. I took a couple minutes to get that one up there I had to go and get the entry list and get it all formatted and everything. But it picks for the algorithm in the truck series. It picks Chase Purdy to win. Uh, on when's it on Saturday or or Friday? Okay, so yeah, I've got, Saturday. got yeah Saturday. So he'll, yeah, pick him to win on Saturday. So yeah, should be interesting. <laughs> and I'll have the Xfinity one. I might have to come back for a second. I got the Xfinity one here in a couple minutes. All right, no problem. Yeah. So I'll try to stall here for a second. Uh, yeah, I mean you. You took the the strong one there. Uh, you mentioned Junior Motorsports effing it up at the end of the race when they were supposed to have a plan and put it together to go and win. Uh, Colleg Racing has always been known for having good plans at Super Speedways. Chandler Smith uh, had a great run at at Vegas uh, here a couple 
couple weeks ago, and then Hemrick has started to show a little bit of uh, a fire here. God only took him getting hurt, I guess, for him to go and show that, get his elbows up. Uh, Justin Haley being in this race, uh, definitely he's a great drafter. He's won in all three NASCAR series. Uh, I, I mean, he's. I would. I would venture to say that he's the only full-time Cup Series driver in this race. And uh, the ten car did struggle a little bit with Kyle Busch, but I mean, I think it's a new deal. Justin Haley is more used to the team and used to everything that's going on uh, with the organization. So I don't think it's as out of the realm if he were to go out there and make something happen in uh, in that car. Um, I'm going to go with, I will go with uh, Justin Haley to win the race on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening, whatever. Uh the um, wild card pick, because now I have to go through the points again out of curiosity, because there are people who have um, don't run every week, but I would venture to say, like, you have the top 23 are all regulars. Uh, Grawl is 23rd. That's pretty bad. Joey Gaze, yeah, so 24 is a 24, uh, 26, 27, 20, 29, 30. Yeah, 30 drivers have run every race so far this year. So my wild card pick, and I'm just pulling it out of my ass, and I'm wor- working on the on the pretense that it was in a different car, different organization, different crew chief, the whole thing. But I'm going to say Jeffrey Earnhardt because what the hell does he have to lose? He's 20. What is he in? He's freaking 29th in points. The hell does it matter? Go out there and and put it through the firewall, try to win the race, and give yourself uh, a chance in in the uh, Xfinity series. Yeah, that's credible there. Definitely got a good bowling uh, swing, and they were joking around about how he's, how jacked he is, so let him go out there and actually, in his day job, and uh, go out and win uh, his first Xfinity race. He came so close at Talladega last year, so I'll put in my uh, uh, picks here. Just give me a second. So we're going to go with um, Justin Haley to win and uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Earnhardt wild card. Uh, are you, does the, yeah, algorithm, I've got the algorithm for, um, All right. yeah. So algorithm picks uh, Parker Retzlaff in the 31 uh, to win. So it's not so far fetched because I think uh, one of the, the only races where that, 31 was kind of up there with Myatt Snyder last year were these super speedway races and maybe a road course here and there. So uh, it's not so out of the realm uh, for him. Retzlaff right now, 19th in points. He's uh, a few positions behind. He's, what, 16 points behind his teammates. So um, for a guy who's got limited starts in the Xfinity series prior to this year, um, that's commendable. And they're a decent enough group. They build good enough cars. And Jordan Anderson almost won uh, the Daytona truck race years ago. So see with that. All right. So now we're down to the main event. The Ambetter Health 400, uh, 36 for 36. Uh, It sounds, and I mean, there's other news coming out recently, last week or so. I mean, Jimmy Johnson, it looks like, is going to enter the uh, cup race at Coda. That's on the heels of Jensen Button being announced to race at Coda, Chicago, and I forget what other road course. Oh, he's uh, running Charlotte, or no, Indianapolis. Yeah, Jensen. And the Indianapolis. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And, and then, then Kimi's then, running at uh, Coda also. In Project 91, exactly. Thank you. And then Connor Daly in the number 50 rent rec will also um, be in that race at Coda. So that'll be something to look forward to in a couple weeks' time. Um, uh, just, so let me bring up, yeah, I have the Ambetter, uh, health 400. So yeah, that it actually is next week or no. Yeah. It's next week. Sorry. So there you go. So this week will be Atlanta. The next week they'll be running the, uh, race at circuit of the Americas. So that'll be, uh, there'll be those guys in there. So looking at the field, of course, Josh Berry driving the nine again this week, next week, it'll be Jordan Taylor. That's another uh, fill-in. 
think that's why I was talking to Tommy Kendall because I'm like that's probably the closest thing to when he drove the uh 42 car for Kyle Petty and and Sabco back in 91. Uh you got JJ Ailey in the 15 car, uh Blaney's running body armor again they run for the first time this year. Trying to go through some of these sponsors. Ad Van Health for Ross Chastain. Menards on the two. Andy Frozen Custer for Bald Spot. Bush Light for Harvick. Kings Hawaiian for Brad Keselowski. Celsius for Corey LaJoy. Lenovo for Kyle Bush. Napa again for Barry. Uh, Shingrix for a second race in a row for Hamlin. Highpoint.com making their first appearance of the year for Chase Briscoe. Action Industries again for Almendinger this week on the 16th. Violet Defense for Chris Busher. Um, Auto Trader on the 22 for Joey Logano. DoorDash for Bubba Wallace. Uh, Liberty University for Byron. Freight FR8 Auctions for McDowell. Gilliland back in the 38 this week. Gary Martin Hayes, whatever that is. Uh, Priest in the Autodesk Cost Tooling 41. Uh, same sponsors for 42 and 43. Xfinity 10G Network 45 for Tyler Reddick. This week, Rick O. Richard will have Nature Valley granola bars on his car. Uh, Cody Ware doesn't have any sponsor listed. Um, but is it Ty Dillon, Ed Ferris at uh, Daytona? Blaster on the 78, um, which is probably what his engine is going to do. Uh, and then Quaker State is on the 99. Interesting. So, all righty then. Uh, you went first for Xfinity? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll um I'll go first here. Uh okay. So I mean Kyle Bush was up front late uh at the at the Daytona five hundred and got got screwed over. Uh Brad Keselowski can be another one that can say he got screwed there as well. And this race last year, of course, uh William Byron won. And uh, in the summer race is when Corey LaJoy tried to do a Hail Mary and got blocked by Clyde. Uh, I'll look through here. I mean, Brad Keselowski had a solid run. Uh, the the six car and that organization looks a lot better this year in general. And um, I, have to, you know, I have to make sure I have the points as well, just out of curiosity. Because I have to make it basically, I think in terms of cup, it's pretty straightforward. I think anybody behind the 18th in points, I think, is solid enough. Because, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you have yet Ty Dillon's 36th in points and B.J. McLeod is 35th. You haven't, he's tied, B.J. McLeod is tied with Travis Pastrana, who only ran the Daytona 500. So that tells you all you need to know. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So I'm going to go. Oh, Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go with go with Brad Keselowski to win at Atlanta. Finally, get off the Schneid with the six car, get break his losing streak, and win at a pseudo super speedway race in the six car because they've been fast at those type of racetracks ever since he jumped into that car. Finally, comes through and gets that victory. And then my wild card selection, uh, my wild card selection for the race. There's actually a couple of good ones, but I because it's just hanging out there, it's kind of like going off in big flashing lights. I'm going Tyler Reddick because he's 20th in points, and I don't think I'll be able to pick him as a wild card after this weekend. So those are my picks for Atlanta uh, Cup Series at Atlanta. Uh, Phil goes Brad Keselowski, uh, Baba Bowie to win. And uh, Reddick wild card. So, what say you, Josh, for the Cup Series? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm gonna pick William Byron to win three weeks in a row, um, and wear the big hat that he's been wearing the last two weeks, which that came from Brian Robinson in the Washington Commanders. He started that yeah. trend, and that took off. But um, yeah, pick him to win. Uh, repeat at Hot Lanta. Uh, and yeah, uh, wild card. We'll go with, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Justin Haley as wild card this weekend um, in the Cup Series, and also algorithm picks uh, Special K, Mr. Brad Keselowski, go and win this weekend uh, at Atlanta. 
Well, the algorithm, uh, Tate Fogelman algorithm, agreed with me on my pick, so that's nice. Uh, we'll see. I might actually have to put a couple bucks on this race because it is a super speedway <laughs> race. Uh, Brad Keselowski, now I'm now I'm curious about the odds. Uh, so, yeah, let me just go and update that because uh, you can't let the Tate Fogelman. Yeah, Brad K is the Tate Fogelman algorithm pick. So there you go. There, I mean, I think you're probably in a much more solid position, whether you take the, the Tate Fogelman side or your regular choices, largely because frickin' white bread uh, Byron or is, is on a heater right now. And then Justin Haley knows how to do this kind of racing. So uh, we will see what happens for sure uh, with, uh, with NASCAR, and we'll talk about it next week. So floor is yours, Josh, to talk about all things sim racing, iRacing, and other gaming uh, platforms there for your sim segment. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think really the big news here in iRacing this week is the fact that they accidentally uh, released the Gen 4 Cup car um, with uh, the ARCA package. Like, they took the ARCA car and basically gave it Gen 4 Cup uh, engine specs and raised it from, I don't know how many horsepower that it originally had to uh, 750, I think, in the, uh, you know, going back to 2007 era Cup racing, you know, that era where you know it was a uh, high down force low down uh force and high horsepower and everything so yeah I, was, I haven't really actually run it yet i haven't had time to do it but i mean i've seen what people have talked about it online it seems like it's really fun you know, you have a lot of acceleration down the straights and then you know you got to get out of the gas in the corners i mean hell yeah let's go um that's the type of racing i mean that people like to run and um you know becomes kind of like the old style cup racing that we saw you know before the car tomorrow and everything so um yeah really interested to see that uh series play out um they made it into a new series uh so it's um the gen 4 cup series uh on i racing uh so yeah really looking forward to running that one i'm see if i can pull up the schedule uh for that one but uh yeah, series list. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's uh, Gen Gen Four Cup fixed series at Homestead. So yeah, right off the bat, uh, good tire wear uh, here. You know, multiple lanes to pick, so you can go run middle, top, or bottom, uh, and you're in the 750 horsepower uh, Gen uh, you know Cup car from 2007 and and before. So which in iRacing racing is basically the one from 2007. Um, so yeah, looking forward to trying this one out, um, for sure. Um, which in the ARCA car, you know, ran pretty well in, um, but like at California, you know, I could run deep into turn one before getting out of the gas, but I guess like there you'd be out of the gas well before that 200 miles per hour sign that they have uh, on that racetrack, which is now destroyed. So, or going to be destroyed, but yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting there. Um, other series that could potentially run in Michigan Speedway in the uh, IndyCar series, fixed oval uh, series there. Um, NASCAR Legends uh, 87 cars at Martinsville. Um, then, uh, let's see, got the GT4s, uh, yeah, GT4s fixed series, Charlotte Roval, which is always interesting there. Um, Cup Series, of course, is at, at Atlanta this weekend. Uh, looking at, yeah, just make sure that that's correct. Uh, own content, yeah, because every everything is at Atlanta this weekend in the Cup Series. Um, so that should be fun there. Uh, IMSA, of course, mirroring the real uh, Rolex, or not Rolex, but uh, Sebring 12 hours. Uh, you got the Michelin Pilot Challenge Series, which is a 120-minute, uh, so two-hour race uh, at um, Sebring. Um, IMSA Endurance Series, that's 160 minutes with the current, uh, you know, Endurance Cars, Endurance Series racing at uh, Sebring also. So you got a lot of lot of opportunities, of course, with the IMSA Series uh, as well, mirroring the real schedule in uh, iRacing. Um, and then you've got other series, you got Touring Car Challenge at uh, Virginia International Speedway or Raceways so of VIR. Um, then you have, uh, 
yeah. Uh, let's see, sports car. Why do they have? Why the hell do they have the Craftsman Truck Series as a, a sports car class? That is not correct. Someone's got to fix that. So it seems like we found a bug in the new uh, release for iRacing this week for season two. So we'll go fix that one. Uh, Mazda MX-5 Cup at Sakuba Circuit. Always fun to race there. Uh, again, Formula. Uh, Formula One, the Mercedes W13 car, Virginia International Raceway, that should be interesting. Uh, Formula, yeah, Formula 1600. So I guess this is the Ray Formula Ford 1600 car, which is it basically looks like the uh, Formula V, but because it doesn't have any aerodynamics or anything on it, uh, kind of like that. But that's uh, at Laguna Seca this week. Um, I think the uh, let's see Formula uh, US Open Wheel trying to look for the indycar version of that they have here that they call us open wheel b uh us open wheel c at laguna seca this weekend uh look let me look here how do they not have um but okay yeah us open wheel b is at uh at suzuka so that's actually a pretty good track so yeah Good to see at least if they can't have the real IndyCar tracks, at least have them on uh, because of the licensing, at least have them on pretty interesting tracks on iRacing. So, yeah, there's always a lot of content, as always, on iRacing to go and uh, race on. Of course, everybody's talking about the Gen 4 Cup car. Going to have to hop on there and, and try it out. But excited to excited to try that out because, uh, you know, Gen 4 Cup, I think, I think we can say for both of us, it probably was when Cup was at its best, uh, you know, before everything changed with the car tomorrow and uh all that stuff so uh i mean twisted still been good racing car. yeah the twisted sister yeah exactly and that was you know that was like when cup that was when i was a kid i mean it's certainly when you were a lot younger and everything but um you know that was when tony won his first championship in the gen 4 cup car and gen 2 or yeah 2005 so two of his titles in the gen 4 cup car dale jr that was when probably he was still had most of his potential and everything uh in gen 4 cup car so yeah that was at the peak of nascar so looking forward to trying that one out so yeah of course as always you know if i stream which maybe i will stream this week with gen 4 cup car try it out and see how it's like uh there but that's uh always as always on um uh, Twitch TV slash Utiler too. So go on there and look at the iRacing streams. Still have the Daytona 500 and everything up there. So um, might try to do some Gen 4 Cup racing at uh, Homestead sometime this week. We'll see uh, if I'm when I'm able to do that. Um, of course, as always, follow at uh, JP Huffline on Twitter. See all my um, takes on the racing. See all all the other things um, that I'm interested in. Um, of course, go on there and follow me and. Uh, follow our content on there as well uh, and then of course follow our uh, youtube channel uh, group share podcast where we post the video feed of the show and everything and um, see uh, watch us if you want or listen on youtube um, if you don't want to listen on the other platforms we're on there as well so yeah that's it this week as always you know glad to be back on another week talk about the racing um and of course talk about you know all the stuff that went on this week and previewing next week as well so yeah, glad to do it. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. We keep this thing going, keep the sh- show moving. We're 160 episodes in, so it's been great. We uh, balance things out. We come up with new ideas that are only exclusive to us, like the Tate Fogelman algorithm. So um, you can only hear it here on the Grip Strip Podcast. Uh, you can hear the Grip Strip Podcast basically anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, we, of course, post on Podbean. That's our um host site but we distribute to basically anywhere and everywhere uh, that matters apple amazon etc uh, etc et you can find me at philip g matthew on twitter you can find our show at grip strip pod on twitter um, you can uh, also find me this week probably on the grid talk podcast uh, for one of the sessions either more than likely the uh, race review part of the um, the broadcast uh, uh, that'll be coming on an hour after the uh, race itself. So that'll be um, one to look at. So if you want to go and support the Grid Talk crew, uh, getting the merch, et cetera, et cetera, that'll be uh, great for 
that team and a lot of great people over there. Some of them that have, of course, uh, been on our show um, over the years or over the last year, at least. Uh, so, yeah, you can find us there. Of course, Josh handles um, the back end here on the show during the recording itself. And then also on the video aside with the YouTube page, the Gripster Podcast YouTube page. So thanks, as always, for all your hard work and being my right-hand man sidekick on this deal. So with that, we'll be back episode 161 of the Grip Strip Podcast next week with a little recap of the NFL free agency, triple header at, at uh, Atlanta. We'll talk about Saudi. We'll talk about 12 hours of Sebring. And then whatever else is in going on in the world of motorsports, we'll have here on the GSP. So thanks as always for listening. For Josh, I'm Phil. Take care. God bless and goodbye.